Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, if you've just downloaded Blender and you've opened it up and you're wondering what in the world is this, then this video is for you. What I'd like to do is just go through what I think are the very basics of Blender to help get you up to speed and creating things in Blender quickly. It's a quick start. So first of all, let's talk about selecting objects in Blender. This is one of the things that drives people crazy the first time they open it. Unlike every other program in the world, you select things with the right mouse button. If I were to click the left mouse button, I would just move this little red thing around, this little red circle, and it would be really annoying. You select things with the right mouse button. So if I hover over the cube and click the right mouse button, I can select that. I can select the light in the scene and the camera all by clicking the right mouse button. This thing is the 3D cursor and we'll get back to that little annoying thing. It's actually a very useful tool. But that's the first thing you need to know. You select things with the right mouse button. The next thing you need to know is how do you deselect things? Because if I right mouse button click out here in an empty area, it doesn't deselect anything. You can deselect objects by pressing the A key. And the A key will also toggle the selection of everything in the scene as well. So the A key just toggles selections on and off for everything. Next, how do you navigate within the 3D world here? Well, for that, that's the middle mouse button. Click that and drag and you can tumble in the scene. Hold down the shift key and middle mouse button, click and drag and you can pan. Hold down the control key and the middle mouse button and you can zoom in and out. Now you can also scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out as well. Now if your view is ever way off like this, say, and you want to select the cube by right mouse button clicking, and you want to tumble around that and you can't get it to frame up around there, you can always hit the period key on the numpad and that will frame up the selected object. Now, some of you may be working on a laptop and you're wondering, well, I don't have a numpad. Well, I guess my suggestion is get one. I use a laptop too and I use a little uh, Bluetooth numpad. It's very helpful, very useful. I think it cost me $35 on Amazon. So now that we can select things and navigate within our 3D view, how do you move objects? Well, you can see here that this has got the little move gizmo already selected. That's down here. This little button here allows you to turn the manipulators on and off. So there's the move, the rotate, and the scale. And just like you would expect, if I click on the move tool and click on one of these arrows and drag, I can move the box up and down, forward and back. I can rotate it and scale it as well. So I can scale it in an, in an axis or click in the circle here to scale the whole thing all at once. Now, Blender is really big on shortcut keys. So the shortcut keys to do all these things for the move tool is the G key and then just move the mouse. And now I'm going to right mouse button click to cancel the operation. And then R to rotate and S to scale. Now two other very useful shortcut keys are the N key and the T key. If I press N, I get the properties panel over here on the right, and I can scroll through it here. And if I press T, I can toggle on the tools panel over on the left. So in the properties panel, I can reset my location. Say so I can set this to zero. I can reset my rotation, set that to zero, and I can reset my scale here, set that back to one. 
So you can adjust the size, rotation, and location with these fields here in the Properties panel. Now for any polygon object like this cube, you've got several different modes that you can work in. Right down here where you can see we're in object mode. We've got several other modes here, but I think the most important one here is edit mode. So if I press the tab key, I can go into edit mode here. Now this gives you access to the component parts of the object, the vertices or the points here, the edges, and the faces. Now you can see down here you've got buttons for each. You can select things in vertex mode, you can select things in edge mode right down here, and you can select things in face mode as well. An easy way to jump between those is to press the control tab keys and then you get a menu of those three components. So if I select face mode then I can go to my move tool, select this face and drag it out and change the shape of the object. Now here's a good place to talk about that 3D cursor again. Let's say I go to edge mode here and I select this edge and I want to rotate this face at that edge. I want to rotate it up. What I can do is press Shift S and that will give me the snap menu and I can select move cursor, that 3D cursor, to the selected object or component. So I'll click that and the cursor snaps to that edge. Now I can switch to face mode, select that face and down here I can change where that selected item is going to pivot. So currently it's, it's at the median point or the center point of that face. I can change that pivot point to the 3D cursor. And now if I go to my rotate tool, I can rotate that face at that edge. So the 3D cursor is actually very helpful, even though it is kind of annoying at the beginning. All right, I'm going to switch my pivot point back to median point here. And then I'm going to hit the tab key to go back to object mode. Now, of course, you aren't always going to be working with just a cube. You can create new polygon objects over here under the Create tab. So let's say I wanted to create... Um, a sphere, a UV sphere. I can click this and create a new object. If I want to delete an object, I just select it and press the X key and then click delete. Now to quickly center the cursor and frame up the scene, I can always just press Shift C and that will frame up the scene here. I can select my cube and hit the period key and then frame up on that as well. So lastly, let me just talk about two modeling tools that if you know how to use these, you can make an incredible number of things. One is the extrude tool, the other is loop cut. So I'm gonna press the tab key to go back to edit mode. I'm gonna to go to the tools tab here. And if I scroll down here, you can see you've got extrude, and loop cut and slide. So first let's look at extrude. I'm going to select this face and I can select extrude over here but it's also the E key. You can use the E key for a shortcut. So I'm going to press E and then just drag the mouse up. So you can add geometry to your objects with extrude. So while I still have this face selected I can hit S, scale it in perhaps, I can hit R and rotate it a bit, or I can just move it up and up and down here. The other tool that's really useful is the loop cut and slide, and the shortcut for this is Control R. So if I press Control R and hover over an edge, you can see I get this kind of preview of where the edge will go, where the loop will be inserted. So if I click now, I can move it up and down, and then I select a place for it to go and click again. Now I can do things like scale that edge or move it up and down. And in addition, 
it creates new faces so that I can maybe select this face and extrude it out again like that. So there are of course many more tools to Blender, but I think these are kind of the core features you need to know just to begin creating things and playing around in Blender. So I hope that's been useful. Please check out my YouTube channel for more Blender videos and subscribe as well to get weekly updates. Thanks for watching. Take care.